Mike Pacelli here. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be talking about the Beatles recording of We Can Work It Out that they did on October 20th and 29th of 1965. Now, when the Beatles were recording their Rubber Soul album, they needed to find a song that would be their next single. And that song wouldn't appear on the album, which was the modus operandi of the day, no matter how weird. So it was down to two songs. It was down to Day Tripper and We Can Work It Out. Well, they ended up deciding to put them both on the 45 and deeming them both as A-sides. And that was the first time that happened. Uh, we Can Work It Out actually surpassed it and ended up being the number one song on the Billboard uh, Hot 100. Paul wrote the verses at uh, the house he bought for his dad in uh, Heswall, which was like uh, 15 miles from Liverpool. He was writing it about the struggling relationship he had with his then-girlfriend, Jane Asher. Uh, Jane Asher wanted to continue her acting career, and that, that meant she had to move 170 miles west of London uh, to do classical theater. And uh, Paul has said, I started writing the song to try to figure my way out of feeling bad after an argument. It was really fresh in my mind. You can't write this kind of song two weeks later. But the fracture was real, and we did fall apart before too long. Sadly, Jane and I did break up. John actually wrote the middle eight, and he said, Paul did the first half, I did the middle eight. You've got Paul writing, we can work it out, real optimistic, you know, and me impatient. Life is very short. So October 20th, 1965, they're at EMI Studio 2, and it's a very happy time for the Beatles. They're just, you know, really getting along and, and, and working well together. And they work quite a lot on the arrangement. Um, John said technically and musically they were improving. Uh, they ended up taking power in the studio for the first time. Now it was George Harrison who suggested putting the kind of waltz-like part uh, in the middle eight. They only did two takes and uh, the instrumentation was John on acoustic guitar, Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, and George playing tambourine. And it's a really worked out tambourine part as you'll see. Um, then they did overdubs, and on the overdubs, John was playing a, uh, an old-time keyboard called a harmonium. Uh, Paul double-tracked his lead vocals, and they did the harmony vocals. But a uh, couple days later, on October 29th, they decided to go back in the studio and redo the uh, harmony vocals. So all together, they spent 11 hours on We Can Work It Out, and that was the longest they spent on any song to date. Uh, then right after the, rec the recording was done, they mixed it. Now, fun facts to know and tell. There's a few obvious uh, flubs in, in the song. John misses a D chord on the third measure of verse two. The harmonium plays an F sharp chord uh, when the guitar is playing a B minor chord on the sixth measure of the second bridge. And uh, on the end, the harmonium plays a G when John stays on a D. And I'll show more about that when I, when I talk particularly about John's part. Uh, they mimed the song for Granada TV on November 65. They filmed some promotional bits at Twickenham uh, for world distribution. But they did play the song during their last um, British tour from December 3rd to the 12th. It was released as a single in Britain on December 3rd, 1965, three days later in America. Uh, and it came on a uh, Capitol album, a mishmash of songs called Beatles Yesterday and today that was released on June 20th, 1966. So that's the backstory. Let's get started. John Lennon is playing his Gibson J160E on We Can Work It Out. Um, I've got mine mic through this uh, Neumann U87, and it's also plugged into a 1967 Fender Princeton Reverb to give it a little more body so it sticks out in the mix. Because unfortunately on the record, many parts of this uh, great rhythm playing are buried, but I've deciphered it for you. So to play the verse, you'll need uh, these chords. You'll need a D. You'll need a D suspended. You'll need a C with a G on top. You'll also need a G like this. And an A chord. Now the rhythm guitar part is quite ingenious in that it's very improvisational and there's just uh, so many rhythmic variations that are just, I think, fantastic. So it starts off like this. When he plays his D, he hammers onto the D suspended. That means you play the D chord and use your pinky to hammer on like, get that sound. So, and for the most part, it's until the last verse, he hammers on every D suspended. So he starts off, he goes. And as 
a lot of those where he picks up, you know, he's picking up to go from a D chord to a G chord, and you hear the first three strings. Now, what's of note on this little part where they sing, right? Uh, we can work it out. He plays a different rhythm each time it happens. The first time he plays, which is uh, one and a two e and a three and a four e and a one and a two e and a three and a four e and a. Which takes us to the second verse. Second verse is like this. Um, now on this D, instead of going right to the D on beat one, he plays open strings and gets onto the end of one. That happens again right before the G. Now on the second part where they're singing, he plays a different rhythm. He plays. And that's the only time you hear a high E note on that A chord. Right. So let me play you that uh, first two verses with Ringo here so you get it in, in uh, a little continuity here. Sound like this. Two, three, go. That's the first two verses, exactly uh, how he plays it. And again, charts and tabs at MikePacelli.com if you want to have it uh, in front of you and make it a lot easier. Now on the bridge, you'll need these chords. You need a B minor. You're going to need a A with a B bass, A over B. You'll need a, a G chord, and he basically just plays the uh, low four strings for that bar G. Then an F sharp suspended, and an F sharp. Okay. Um, later on, he'll get a B minor seventh on the bridge, which is this. But the rhythm uh, on the bridge is like this. It starts off. Um, Now on these B minors, uh, it feels like it's in 3-4. You can write it in 3 quarter time for, uh, what would it be, 4 measures. Or if you want to keep it in 4-4, four, four, you just think of what's being played as uh, the, the second part of quarter note triplets. So it sounds like 1. <laughs> then it continues. Okay, then we're into verse 3. Verse 3 sounds like this. Now on this D, he does a little... He plays really hard too. It's like 1 E and a 4 and... I'm sorry, 3 E and a 4 and... So on the C. Nice little accent. Continuing. Another open. Now on this part, his his rhythm is uh, right. So slowly that would be. Okay. Then we're to the bridge two. Now on bridge two, he's doing this great little rhythm thing where it's like uh, one and a two e and a three and a four e and a really really a little softer too on the B minors like this like. And then he gets that B minor seventh, so. To a G, low four notes, four strings. 
back to the triplet. Mm -hmm. And on that last uh, beat of the triplets, when John's playing a B minor, the harmonium is actually playing a F sharp. So you have the harmon the F sharp chord has an A sharp note, and of course the B minor has a B note. So for that one beat, you hear that dissonance. You know this chord, this chord against. So you have. And then back to um, with the B minor seventh chord, G again. <clears throat> and we're off to uh, verse four. Verse four has a, a few unusual things, and I'll play it for you like this. Here's verse four. Um, Nice hard uh, accents on that D on the one. Continuing, and then here he does on the suspended. He goes um, C. Now on the fourth time, the rhythm is. So one and a two and three and a four and one and a two and a three and a four and a. And it finishes off with just a D chord triplets. Play play to the the uh, fourth, third, and second string to the <laughs> first, second, and third string. That's the ending. But again, what I find so uh, just amazing is that every time, you know, the first time it's the second time it's and then the third time it's uh, um, right. And then the fourth time, it's... So the lesson there is, you know, so many guitarists would just get a pattern and stay with the pattern every time, but John was just improvisational, and uh, I just think it's fantastic. Again, charts and tabs are available for you to download at mikepacelli.com, and you can see exactly uh, what John played. I put it all together in a sound alike for you to see how the parts fit together with the harmonium. And uh, so let's have a look at this.
Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how those parts fit together. I suggest you learn John's fantastic rhythm part on here and play along with my sound alike, and you'll get it just like he played it. If you'd like to drop me a line, please do so at MikePacelli.com. That's where the charts and tabs for all my video lessons are available for you to download. And I appreciate those of you that support my work by downloading some of them. So until next time, have fun playing this great old song. I'm Mike Pacelli. Thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs>